In this session, we're going to work through an example of cost-based economic value to the customers, or EVC. Since hybrid cars are a hot issue these days, we're going to use that as our example. Before diving into the illustration, let me make a couple points. First, from our six-piece framework, we know that products deliver benefits to customers. That's called benefits orientation, and we're always focused on what are the benefits, both in terms of the nature of them and the magnitude that a customer receives. We also know that price is a normalizing variable with respect to value. What that means is that we can always reflect the number of benefits or the amount of benefits that a customer is receiving to the price in order to determine whether a customer is getting a good value or not. Uh, for example, if we hold benefits constant and we reduce price, by definition, customers are getting more value because they're getting more benefits per dollar. Uh, similarly, if we hold price constant and we raise the amount of benefits, value goes up because, again, customers are getting more benefits per dollar. Now, in some instances, the decision that customers are making is based strictly on economics. When that's true, and it is in a lot of business-to-business -business environments especially, uh, analysis of economic value to the customer is appropriate. We can figure out what advantage one product has over another. Now, in the case of hybrid cars, the decision is not strictly economic, but economics are a major component of it. We'll begin by treating it as a straight economics problem, and then later we'll factor in some of the intangible or softer variables. Now, in our specific example, we're going to assume that our benchmark product is a conventional gas-fueled car, or ordinary old gas engine, that sells for $20,000 and gets about 15 miles per gallon. Now, if you need to visualize a car, uh, think maybe of like a, a Honda Civic. Now, our hybrid car is completely equivalent in terms of performance and options to the conventional. So think of it as a Civic Hybrid that just has a battery stuck in the back and a different drivetrain. And let's assume that it gets 45 miles per gallon of gasoline. For simplicity, we'll assume that both cars have equivalent useful lives and that all of their operating expenses, uh, stuff like repairs and maintenances, uh, maintenance, oil changes, are equal. That's just to simplify the problem. And also to the finance people, well, we understand about the time value of money. Uh, we're going to outboard that and just treat this as a nominal problem. We're not going to worry about discounting all of the factors back. Okay, taking that into account then, the question is, what would a rational buyer be likely to pay for a hybrid car? Again, given that the comparable conventional car sells for 20000 and gets 15 miles per gallon, and the hybrid gets 45 miles per gallon. How do we figure that out on an economic value to the customer basis? Well, let's make some more assumptions. Let's assume that the cars have a 10-year life, and it's the same for the hybrid and for the conventional car, uh, and that the cars are driven, on average, 12,000 miles per year. That's about average in the U.S., about 12,000 12, miles per vehicle a year. Okay, so each of these cars will be driven 10 years at 12,000 miles, 120,000 miles over their life we can compute how much gasoline each of these cars is going to use over a life. So in the case of our conventional car, it's being driven 120,000 miles, 15 miles per gallon. 15 into 120,000 says that over its life, the conventional car will use 8,000 gallons of gas. The hybrid, driven the same distance over the life, at 45 miles per gallon, only uses 2,667 gallons, a difference of 5,333. We can monetize that difference by assuming an average gas price. And let's pick uh, 250 a gallon. Now, some may think that that's uh, too low. Some may think it's too high. You know, that's fine. This is just our starting point for the analysis. Well, what we know then is that our 5,333 gallons monetized at $2.50 a gallon is $13,333. Now, what does that then say about what a rational, economically driven buyer would likely spend for a hybrid? Well, since a conventional car was $20,000, and if there is 13,333 of gas savings, you know, a rational buyer should be willing to spend up to $33,333 for the hybrid. 
When they do, the total cost of operation and for fuel of the hybrid and conventional cars are exactly equal. Now, that begs the question, why then would any rational buyers in the marketplace pay either more than $33,333 or be unwilling to pay that much? That is, that they'd pay only a lesser amount for the hybrid. Again, we'll emphasize these are rational buyers you know, who are operating on you know, these assumptions. Why would some pay more and why would some pay less? Okay, that's our fundamental question. So what we're asking again is, you know, why is it, given you know, our economic calculation of a difference of 13,333, you know, why is it that there would be some people out there who'd be willing to pay more than 33,333 and some people even unwilling to pay that much? I'll hit the pause button for a second and think about it. You know, come up with a couple reasons why it is rational buyers would be willing to pay more or would be unwilling to pay that much. All right, here are a couple reasons. Uh, first is that different buyers, while being rational, may have different usage profiles and different driving styles. So, for example, some people may drive more than 12,000 miles per year, uh, in which case, you know, benefit to the hybrid. You know, other folks may have different driving styles than is, quote, average. Uh, hybrids get their major benefit out of city driving, so uh, if a person tends to have a higher proportion of their driving, even if it is only just 12,000 miles, they'd get a greater benefit out of a hybrid car economically than with somebody who does disproportionately rural driving. Second, you know, the people may differ with respect to their for, uh, expectations and their forecast. Uh, for example, you know, somebody may think that a uh, car will have a different life. You know, they may think a hybrid, uh, you know, may last longer or may be less durable than a conventional car. Who knows? You know, it's a matter for an individual to determine. You know, or different people certainly have different views as to where gas prices are going to go. Uh, some folks may think that 250 a gallon, you know, is is, is pessimistic. Uh, other folks may think that uh, you know it's way pessimistic that in fact. Uh, you know, that gas prices may go up to $4 or $5. You know, obviously, if gas prices go up significantly from the 250 assumption, you know, benefit to the hybrid cars. Now, those are relatively hard factors, and it was, you know, differences in the, the usage or driving profiles of the people. A uh, second is then the category of, so what are they expecting and what are they forecasting for the future? People can differ along each of these dimensions. In addition, there are some soft factors, most of which can be thought about as tied to environmental concern. You know, for some people, they're willing to pay over and above the pure economic difference of the cars, you know, because they are concerned about the environment, think buying a hybrid car, you know, would do something to, to, to aid the, the problem. That says that they accrue some benefits, you know, by buying a hybrid that are not strictly economic, that they do just, just feel better. They think that they're doing something good, and to them, that is a significant benefit that they are willing to pay more for. Let's put that in the context of our value map. Remember that a value map relates the perceived benefits that products deliver along the horizontal axis, many down to few and price as perceived by customers along the vertical axis from low to high. And what we've always said is that when you look at products in the marketplace, you know, at a specific point in time, you would expect that there would be a relationship between the perceived benefits, magnitude and nature of the benefits, and the price, such that at any point in time, you know, we expect some sort of fair market value relationship between the benefits and the price. Now, we depict it in, in this example as being linear, though there's no reason it necessarily needs to be. It's just a simplification for discussion. Now, part of what we were saying with economic value to the customer is that there are, you know, a segment, there are people in a segment that buy strictly on an economic basis and assuming that they have relatively consistent assumptions to those that we had in our, in our example, you know, they would frame, you know, one segment. So what they're getting is, you know, benefits are largely economically driven that says that they would be willing to pay, this would be our 33,333 for a hybrid car. So they are economic buyers. They account for, you know, a segment. They're rational along the fair market value line. 
and for the economic benefits that they think they'll derive, they're willing to pay to $33,333. Are there other segments? Well, of course there are. You know, first, there are some people who are unwilling to pay that much for the car. Why would that be? Well, again, we cited that they could have different usage patterns or different assumptions. You know, it could be that these are people that are just uh, innovation and change adverse. You know, they may perceive that there is technology risk in a hybrid car. You know, say that the, the battery technology changes in just a couple of years, that their car will be obsoleted. You know, or that, uh, well, the, the battery claims seem to be, be pretty good. That, by and large, they're, you know, untested, and maybe the car won't perform as it is being advertised. So these people perceive that there is a lower level of benefits that are delivered by the product, and accompanying those lower benefits or associated with the lower level of benefits, they're only willing to pay a lower price, a price below the 33333 What about the top end of the market? Well, we talked about our environmentally conscious people. Let's use them as an example. Now, there are the economic benefits that accrue. We've established that. And it could be that people do internalize that the intangible benefits that they get from being green, from having a car that is environmentally sensitive, provides them with real benefits. Now, they might be psychic or psychological benefits, but they're every bit as real as economic benefits. So, if people are getting benefits that are over and above those of the economics, that says that they can be completely rational and pay more for the car, more than what was our 3333 over here. They're willing to pay more for that car because they believe that associated with the hybrid car are these intangible benefits that provide them some, some real value. Now, what we've said is then that, that there are value segments in the marketplace. There are three of them, as we've defined it here willing to pay different prices because they perceive different benefits being received by the car as directly applicable to their situations. So one of the tricks in marketing is to figure out, do these value segments in fact exist, and then how do you attack them? You know, how do you communicate with them? How do you design your product package in order to take advantage of them? Well, in this case, what we would want to do probably is take advantage of the fact that there are folks out there you know, who do get real benefits out of the cars because they are being green. Knowing that these people are willing to pay more, you know, they're likely to be the very first segment that we would attack in the marketplace. We would design our car you know, in a way that would deliver all of the economics as we've described, and when we communicated the proposition, we'd make sure you know, that we elevated in our selling proposition the fact that somebody can save money and be green you know, by buying a hybrid car.